Creating this awesome effect is surprisingly simple. All it takes is AI, After Effects, and like four layers. Not only is this effect powerful, but the technique to make it allows this to work with just about any logo or text. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. The first step to creating the sick 3D AI logo effect is to generate the images. I'm gonna use Focus, which you guys can download and run easily through the free tool Pinocchio. I talked about Pinocchio in our last shorts video. Once Focus is up and running, it's gonna open up a browser window and we're gonna go ahead and click on the input image tab and then click on image prompt. The next step is to import in the logo that we wanna use for this effect. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it here. And then we're gonna click on the advanced tab and we're gonna have these options and each of these is gonna be different controls that we might have to adjust depending on our prompt. So let's test this out with the prompt aerial drone top-down angle of a construction site and click on generate. Now the cool thing about using Focus is that it has prompt expansion built into it. So you can see that it's actually generating a much more detailed prompt. So as you can see, this did not really utilize the logo that we sent it that well. Of course, maybe on this drone, you can see the Adidas colors showing up here but overall we don't have the structure of the logo and that's based off of the settings that we have down here in the bottom. So the image prompt model by default is actually not gonna work too well for this and instead we could use Pyrocani or CPDS, which is just gonna be a little bit better in the sense of holding the structure of the logo. So if we switch this to Pyrocani, let's also change the stop at from 0.5 to something like 0.8. And what that means is that if you can imagine this value as to how long the image is getting generated, at 0.8, that is about 80% of the image being generated is how much this original image is gonna affect it. We want a little bit of leeway room before the final image is resulted so that we have bits of the logo showing but not entirely in the same exact logo that we just sent it in. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more as to what that means once we click generate. So while this is generating, you can already see the structure of the logo showing up much better. But one of the things that is not showing up so well is the black inside of the logo for the stripes. And the reason for this is because Pyrocani focuses a little bit more on just the outer edges, the outlines of it. So if you're actually a feed in a colored logo, it won't show up well at all. But for this instance, it kind of looks pretty good. It's almost as if these are like little structures or tracks within the construction site that we have here set up. And of course it's gonna generate two images because by default that is what it's set to. If you wanna see a little bit more of the settings, we can also click on the advanced tab here. We can change some of the things like the aspect ratio, the performance, we can either switch it from speed to quality or extreme speed since we're just gonna be generating a bunch of these. You can also change the amount of images as well as the negative prompts which I highly recommend as settings that you guys play around with if you wanna really fine tune the final images that you're producing here. Now, these two results look pretty great, but we can also switch this from Pyrocanning to CPDS and take a look at how these results are gonna come out. So these are coming out pretty good and the settings that I used was a stop at 0.70 and a weight of 0.75. And again, these values you're gonna to have to adjust based off of the image that you use originally. For this technique, it works best when you have a black and white image. So make sure that you you have something like that downloaded for when you're trying this effect. Another thing to note is that some of the prompts will produce results that may have you changing the weights a little bit better to get what you want as a desired result. So for this instance, since I added more details, I'm gonna also wanna increase the weight of the original image prompt. That way that it influences the final result much more clearly. So this one looks pretty good. And once we have an image that we want, what we're gonna do is create a brand new folder. I'm gonna call this Adidas 3D AI logo. And then when we're naming the file, we're gonna use a numbering naming system. So I'm gonna start off with zero and just call this Adidas zero and hit save. And then let's continue changing our prompts until we have a set of about 10 to 20 images that we can use. For every image in the image sequence, you'll need to add a number after it to signify where it will be placed inside of the video. So for example, every time that you click to download an image, you should be changing the number up by one. So we'll have zero through 13 in this instance, but this can be however many images that you generate. Once you have a decent set of images generated, you can hop over to After Effects and import this to do the final compositing. Hop over to After Effects and create a brand new project. And then let's give this project a name and save it. 
it. Now let's navigate to the images that we generated and go to the folder and drag in the entire folder into the After Effects project composition area. What you're gonna notice is that rather than importing the folder since we named this sequentially, you're gonna see this import instead as an image sequence. By default, it's gonna be 30 frames per second, but we want it to be a little bit slower. So let's right click on it and then change the interpret footage main and then change this from 30 frames per second to somewhere around 12 frames per second. Now let's create a brand new composition based off of this image sequence. So we can click and drag on it over to this little icon. It's gonna create a composition with the exact same settings as the footage that was imported into it. Once we hit play, we can see already this effect is working. But if we want to do a little bit more fine tuning and touching up to this, we can start adding in a couple adjustments and effects. So let's import in the logo that we use and also drag this in, put it on top, and then let's turn off the visibility for that layer because we're going to be using that a little bit later. The first thing that I want to add to this is an adjustment layer. And we're always going to want to add in a curves effect, increase the brightness slightly, and then we're going to add in a sharpen effect, increase the sharpness by however much you want. I think 25 is gonna look pretty good here. And then let's also increase the saturation slightly by adding a hue saturation effect and increasing this by a value of about 15. This just makes the image pop a little bit more. Next, we're gonna create another adjustment layer. And this one, we want to have affect only the logo portion. So we're gonna use that logo that we dropped in earlier. And I'm gonna set the track mat from none to luma mat. Now you're gonna see the logo disappears and that it automatically gets turned off. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna drive the information from the logo into the adjustment layer. So for this adjustment layer, I'm also gonna add in a curves effect and then I'm gonna increase this brightness slightly and you're gonna see the image start to get much brighter. Now this is currently selected to Luma Matte, but since our logo is black on a white background, we wanna use Luma Matte inverted. And then let's resize the logo and reposition it so it fits properly within our scene. This right here is looking pretty good, except some of the edges for this are a little bit harsh and since our generated image is not an exact one-to-one -one copy, it's gonna look a little bit messy if we leave this as is. So I also wanna add in a fast box blur and then increase the blur radius ever so slightly just to have a little bit of feathering around those edges. So let's make this about 10. And we can see now that the curves effect on that adjustment layer is getting applied much nicer to the logo. And bam, just like that, we have a super impressive result only using four layers and super quickly in After Effects. Now, if we wanted to do the same thing to just about any logo, we would do the same exact process and get a similar result. Now you may have noticed there is another cool technique that I played around with in the example one in which we take out some of the coloring. So if I do a hue saturation and I knock this all the way down to 0%, then you can see that the logo stands out and it's discolored in the center, which makes a kind of interesting effect. If you wanted to affect everything around it but the logo, all you would have to do is change the Luma Matte from inverted to Luma Matte. I hope you guys have fun playing around with this effect in After Effects and using AI to make some really awesome, easy VFX shots. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It lets us know that we're making content that you enjoy and it does a tremendous amount for the channel, letting us know that we're on the right track. So thanks to everyone who's hit that subscribe button anyways. Hope to catch you in the next one. Till next time, peace.